Now, who doesn't love hunting the early season? I can't wait. I have some special time this year because I'll be hunting with the uh, hunting public in their public land challenge the first four days of Michigan season. And boy, I can't wait uh, not only to, to hunt at that time with a bow on public land in, in Southern Michigan, something I normally wouldn't take the time to go do, but uh, Dan Infault's gonna be there, John Eberhardt might be there, Mark Kenyon, and of course, all the guys from the hunting public. Um, and there'll be some great other hunters there just to be able to spend the time with. Uh, Dylan's coming out to film, so we're gonna have some great times around the fire in the evening, and you can imagine the stories and strategies that'll be flowing. And that leads in to the top five early season bow hunting tips and hunting tips that I can bring to you this fall. And these are, you know, there's always the hunting strategies for what type of land you're on. You know, that, that might be a little bit separate, but just in general. The first tip that I want to bring to you, it's a little bit different, is so many people focus right now on where deer are at currently. And right now it's August 22nd. Um, what's going on in the middle of September could be completely different, the third week of September. And right around that time, right around October 1st, within two weeks on either side, you start to see that annual whitetail buck shift where they're getting the last cutting of hay, beans are turning brown, leaves are dropping from the trees, hunting pressure is being applied. Those fields that looked really nice and thick deer in the middle of summer are starting to wane. They're turning brown, they're falling down, there's not as much cover, not as much food in the, in the same locations. And so the number one tip, this first tip that I can start with, whether it's number one or number five in importance, is that you should really be paying attention to where the deer were last year in the beginning of the season, not necessarily where they are a month before the season, even two weeks before the season begins. Focus on where you believe those mature bucks are going to be and not where they have been throughout the summertime. That opening day is right in that time where deer are shifting. That's where the trail cameras, rub sign, tracks, whatever you rely on, they're telling you that deer are not there or that deer are moving in it seems, you know, a lot of these seem pretty basic, but it, they're not because so many people fall into that trap that they've watched bucks in a certain area all summer long. And when they go on an opening day, they expect them to be there. And, and you know, truly, are you ever wasting time when you're in the woods? I believe I am because I have a lot of stuff to write, videos to create. I have other places I want to hunt. But when it comes to the early season in those bucks, are you making a productive sit where it actually matters, meaning that those bucks that you're after are truly on that land. Really do your best to try to figure out not only where they've been, that doesn't help you too much, it's almost more where they've been during the summer is where they're not gonna be at some point in October. So make sure you're hunting where they're going to and where they're not where they're currently at, at the moment. Now another one, and this is something that's interesting because people really focus on hunting acorns and oak trees all season long. And, and they're planting oaks, and, and planting oaks is great. Um, I believe that if you don't have oaks, putting them into the woods and planting them in the woods is such an outstanding idea, idea to help hunters uh, you know, decades from now. Um, and even if you get some of the short growing oaks, you cannot define a deer movement, you can't define a hunt, you can't define a consistent hunt if you're hunting over acorns all season long. But in the early season, well, I can think of a southwest facing slope in southern Ohio on a giant tract of public land that has some beautiful white oaks on it over about a three or four acre area, maybe five acres, maybe 10. It's a smaller area full of rubs and scrapes in September. Um, but those deer and that sign dry up during October because those acorns are already gone. We've just actually picked some acorns off the ground right now and it's August 22nd. So there's a lot of meat in them. Uh, I even bit one open <laughs> just to see how bitter it was and, and look and see how much meat was in it. And uh, they're full of meat, they're full of acorn. And so early season, great time to hunt stands of white oak and chestnut oak. Chestnut oak are those really big oaks. We found a lot down in Ohio when we were down there on public land. And rubs and scrapes in late September, early October were plentiful in those areas, uh, but they aren't during the rut. And so the timing of when you hunt those oaks is perfect for the early season. So seeking out those areas, seeking out those beautiful stands of white oaks as it relates to your overall hunting movement, you're already, you have that plan of attack. You might have stands that are great cruising stands, great stands over water holes, even leading to food sources. 
but they're really heat up during that early season because of those acorns and you can't miss out on that time of the year because you don't get a lot of opportunity to hunt those major mass producing trees and that's a quality of the time of the year uh, to do so. One of my favorite places I've been actually able to take, uh, take advantage of personally are when you have long movements between food and bedding that whitetails will create over a quarter mile, 300 yard area, 500 yard area, whatever it is, where they're feeding in distant ag lands a lot of times or distant hardwoods and then you're hunting that area as they move back to that diversity and high stem count area on the way back to their bedding areas and you're getting close to the bedding area with now, without spooking the bedding area. So what, what's nice about a long defined line of movement is it's usually a pretty thin movement. You're not just hunting bedding area on the sign of ag field and the deer go from ag field to bedding area and it's, a, it's literally a 10 foot change whether it's ag right here and then they're bedding 10 yards in that's kind of hard to hunt but when you have big open hardwoods separating ag land and then big bedding areas swamp land diversity this could even be out on public land then the longer the movement the more defined that movement as far as a very narrow movement very easy to get closer back to that bedding area and you almost look at it like a giant barbell bedding feeding you're coming in to the end of that barbell towards the bedding area you're allowing those deer to travel right by and great morning opportunity actually and then i like the evening hunts in those situations and i'm hunting more towards the middle you know maybe even in that same stand that you hunted in the morning but you're taking advantage of those long movements especially on a cold front morning and we'll talk about the weather in a second, but cold front mornings are outstanding because if it's a very long movement, you can count on deer being around the edge or around the edge of food, around the edge of as it goes back into the hardwoods, and they're just feeding slowly on their way back, especially if you just had a major temperature drop. One of my best bucks in Michigan, I shot on October 12th, I believe it was 2012, right around in that range, uh, maybe 2010, but there's a major cold front that went through and I was hunting back by the bedding areas. There's a quarter mile of hardwoods between myself and ag, and I was shooting that buck at 10 in the morning as he came in with a bunch of does and fawns, and they were starting to bed down in the thick cover, and he was moving through, was able to shoot them, and that was after a 30 degree temperature drop. There's over 50 mile an hour winds the day before. It cleared out for a 27 degree morning on October 12th, and it was a beautiful hunt. Um, cold hunt, I remember my toe was getting pretty cold. It was pretty cold for early October, and, and, and uh, Central Michigan, but uh, a great opportunity. Now, something that you really have to pay attention to, and I talk about morning hunting, if you have that long movement that's very defined and you can get in there early, allow the deer, deer to come through, but a lot of times people don't have that opportunity, especially on small parcels. And there is always a priority that you need to place on evening hunting in the early season. In fact, evening hunting should be the priority for the entire season outside of the rut, maybe opening day of gun season, maybe that warm up during an extreme cold front period during December where you're going in and getting next to bedding on an oak flat or on some type of briar field flat where they can feed. You know, there's some food still hanging around, especially hardwood regeneration, that's even better. Uh, clear cut, even better, you know, for that late season. But you're going into that and a lot of times people can't wait to hunt in the morning or get out to hunt so they go out on opening morning and they ruin that highly defined evening movement that's been going to food plots stand of oaks whatever it might be and the priority is always on evening because you don't really know if you're going to beat those bucks back in the morning now if it's a long movement you might take that chance but those shorter movements a lot of times they're beating you back there before you can get to them in the morning and then you're spooking out the evening hunt which has a lot higher value i'd rank on a high a scale of one to ten those morning hunts during that time are a two or three out of 10, even at the best. And you really have to watch the circumstances and, um, and know that those deer are on a long movement coming back, maybe across a long CRP field, fence rows, whatever it might be. But the evening at times can be a 10 out of 10 in the early season. The evening hunting, that's that fourth tip. The fifth tip, always hunt by the weather. And so when is your opening day? My opening day is when there's a cold front during the early season. I don't care this year if the season's open on the 14th. My season's going to be the 14th, 15th, 16th, or after, depending on when that cold front is, because if I have a mature buck moving in the area, I want to place all my bets into the weather hand, making sure that 
if it's 80 degrees in the evening, humid, might not be moving during daylight in any means. But if there's a 20 degree temperature drop in the early season, you can bet that he's probably gonna be on his feet early and he's gonna be passing that stand, that evening stand that I have. And so, yeah, the evening might be a priority in the early season, but not if there's bad weather, not if there's warm weather, windy weather, stormy weather. I'm waiting for that giant weather to pass. I'm waiting for the temperature to drop. I'm going out and hitting the shady side of a food plot, the cool evenings, and boy, just even looking at your cameras, we have a trail cam strategy video we talked about where you really analyze the temperatures of the deer moving in the specific time of the year that you're hunting, um, that phase of the season, and uh, make sure you hit those temperatures. And that's no different than the early season, and it's all relative. If there's a drop from 95 degrees to 75 degrees, that's still a 25 degree drop. If there's a drop from 65 to 40, that's still a significant drop. It doesn't matter if it's 95 to 70, it's 25, or it's 75 to 50, still a 25 degree temperature drop. Look for those major drops. It's all relative. Doesn't matter if it's 25 degree drop or a 15 degree drop, 12 degree drop in the early season, mid season, rut, late season, gun season, it's all the same. It's all relative. It's a great temperature drop. And what you find is the better the drop, the more major the conditions coming through. Don't pay attention to the barometric pressure that can really lead you astray. Don't pay attention to the moon, but do pay attention first to the temperature, second to the wind speed changes. Wind speed's all relative too. It doesn't matter if it's dropped from 60 to 30 or 45 to 15. It's still a 30 mile an hour uh, difference in wind speed and you should pay attention to that. That typically follows a very major cold front drop. And then there's usually extreme conditions with that. Thunder, lightning, blizzard, snow, hail, whatever it might be. Pay attention to those five early season tips. I think that that will get you on the mature box consistently every season, get you on those deer that you're after and have fun this early season. It's right around the corner. I can't wait. Like I said, it's gonna be a special time in early October with the hunting public guys. And um, a lot of strategy gonna be floating around there and it'll be a lot of content created. And most of all, there's no winners or losers in that. And I'm saying that in case I don't shoot a big buck, right? But I'm saying there's no winners and, and losers. We're not looking at it like that way. Everyone's gonna be a winner because not only can I make, what, not wait to meet some of those guys, but we're gonna create a lot of strategy content that most of all, the purpose of this channel and everyone else's channels is to help you guys out. That's why we're all invited at that time. And have a great early season. I can't wait to hear about it soon.